these aren't the droids you're looking for. These aren't the droids we're looking for. One of the things I love about Farscape is that it has very little to do with robots. Now, I have nothing against robots per se. I acknowledge they are soulless bastards, but I understand that they were made that way, so I don't hold it against them. My problem with robots is that they have become a cheap prop for bad science fiction plots. Some people like hard science fiction that focuses on science and machines, and that's fine. But one of the reasons I enjoy Farscape is because it is not obsessed with technology and its plots are not dependent upon machines. Now, you can certainly do interesting things, and even philosophical things, with robots, androids, droids, or whatever you want to call them. The nature of personhood is the obvious one, of course. When you have a thing that looks and acts human but is not human, that raises interesting issues. Also, artificial intelligence raises the questions of emotions, consciousness, and ethical responsibility. Now, much of that ground in science fiction was covered, to an extent, by Star Trek Next Generation with the character Data. Despite the brilliant portrayal by Brent Spiner, Data became increasingly a self-cliché repeating the same plot devices. Actually, we can go back to the classic book, I, Robot, the book, please forget the movie version, by Isaac Asimov to see some early exploration of these themes. Beyond that, I will not go into the history of robots in science fiction, but focus on robots in Farscape. These aren't the droids you're looking for if you seek a gadgety robots, killer app androids, or symbols of technological alienation brought about by machines. Nothing is called robot or android in the Farscape universe. In fact, the terms are never spoken once in any episode or book. The word droid appears only in They've Got a Secret. The only artificial beings Farscape has are DRDs, Diagnostic Repair Drones, and Bioloids. The first alien that John Crichton meets, he understandably assumes Moya is just a spaceship, is a DRD. I say alien, not machine, for a DRD because it is not entirely clear if DRDs are alive like Moya is or simply mechanical. Now, Crichton does say in the episode They've Got a Secret that the DRDs are not biomechanoid like Moya, that they are in, quote, entirely mechanical wires, gears, and servos. The DRDs probably are only machines, but they do have semblances of personalities most notably 1812, and other features of being alive and some sort of sentient being. They are in regular communication with Moya and Pilot, and their role is to maintain the functions of the living Leviathan. The DRDs are a part of Moya, almost organic like cells in her body. They do not fend off infections like leukocyte cells, except in the episode They've Got a Secret, but they are otherwise similar to cells in the body, like leukocytes, in roaming Moya's body, keeping her clean and healthy. They are, as the name says, diagnosing and repairing problems with Moya. We learn that every Leviathan produces his or her own set of DRDs, and that they are slightly different in each Leviathan. Leviathans apparently build these DRDs as they grow, which implies they are mechanical, but this is never 100% clear. Anyway, the characters in science fiction most similar to DRDs, aside from that Hydra monstrosity of the Star Wars franchise in which there's a droid for every conceivable function, are the Scudders in Red Dwarf. Now, Scudders are clearly robots and they run around the ship functioning as maintenance workers, but they mainly serve in Red Dwarf as running gags or props for other jokes. A biological parallel to the DRDs, for an example, is in Neil Asher's Polity novels, where the Praetor, a crab-like alien race, keeps dog-sized scavengers on board their spaceships to keep them clean of organic waste. Mostly the Duchess is left by the Praetor because they are very messy creatures. Farscape DRDs aren't plot props used to provide crude humor or just crudity. They are part of multiple plot lines in Farscape, but only in their role as parts of Moya integral to her health. 
This is a testament to Farscape's writers, who created a realistic universe and stayed true to it without resorting to plot tricks and worn-out tropes. Fans of hard sci-fi who are into technical stuff will be disappointed that we never hear any specs on the DRDs, how they function, and so on. But that is in keeping with how the DRDs are a normal part of the landscape on the Leviathan, and the people think of them only when the DRDs aren't doing what they expect them to do. Kind of like how we think of so many things around us. Now, spoilers in this paragraph to be sure, watch Farscape. The other type of robot in Farscape is a pilot. We encountered them only late in the series in season four, first in bringing home the beacon, after which they quickly become a useful plot prop, unfortunately. The writers pull down from the shelf the very common trope of robot simulation versions of people and use it for two tomato surprises and a little bit of emotional manipulation. Aaron and then Stark are bioloided, if that's a word, though everyone assumes, naturally, that they are the real person. Bioloids are Scarin technology, who apparently have their own Terrell Corporation. All we know about bioloids is that the Scarins can grab someone, put them in some sort of replicator machine, and fabricate a matching bioloid that is part biological, part machine. Bioloid, get it? We also learned that the Kalish also have at least one of these machines and use them to create secret agents for their resistance to Scarim rule, as you know who, as we find out later. Now, how bioloids are programmed with someone's memories is unclear, but as we see from the bioloid version of Aaron, the memories are not duplicated from the captured person, but only from what the Scarins know about the person. The gap in knowledge exposes the bioloid and provides a very useful plot. We don't know. What? What? There are several malevolent robots our protagonists must face. There are the Karak Metalites, that look like Berinium ingots when dormant, but become active and eat metal in Liars, Guns, and Money Part 2. They are reminiscent of the replicators in Stargate SG-1. Then there is the robot that tries to gas Crichton and Katrala in Look at the Princess Part 2. But that's it, really. In Farscape, technology, including robots, serve the plots, but do not dominate them. The people are always the focus. So, Farscape has no sexy gynoids. That's the female version of Android, you know. No servant droids with British accents. No more intelligent than humans androids. No clumsy robots running about shouting danger. Now, if you want those, these aren't the droids you're looking 